evening. It looks like we have a quorum and it looks like it's 6.30. So I will call if John is ready to record. Oh, yep, peace. <laughs> yep, I am now. All righty, I will call the meeting of the Conservation Commission for February 16th open. And uh, first on the agenda is approval of the minutes from February 2nd. So I will call for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Uh, next, we have a public hearing for 12 Roosevelt Ave, which I have a copy and I will read it under the Wetland Protection Act, Chapter 131, Section 40 of Mass General Law as amended on the West Bridgewater Conservation bylaws, rules and regulations. The Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing through remote participation February 16th for a request for determination of applicability for activities associated with an upgrade to a residential septic system at 21 Roosevelt Ave. And it's been advertised and we're open. So we have Dave Klinner who's going to represent us. He's on the phone and uh, on Zoom, but he's got an issue with his uh, computer. So I'll we're gonna unmute him now because we're getting some feedback. And I think what I'm gonna do is mute everybody else just so it doesn't come back. Okay, it's all yours, Dave. Hello? Hello? Yep. Yep. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm going to share the screen. Sorry for the Sorry. feedback. And I'm going to bring up my drawing. Can everybody see that? Uh, there is some feedback. I apologize. Uh, this is 21 Roosevelt S. And we have uh, the property line in yellow. The west end line delineated by Fort Monroe uh, in green. And this is to the north of the property. And we have orange uh, for the 50 and magenta for the 100. Uh, the existing system is in the front of the house and there is an existing tank. Uh, what we're proposing is to replumb inside the house, come out the side uh, with a new tank and a septic system. Uh, the septic system will be outside the 50-foot uh, buffer, and it will be within the 100. Uh, the closest the septic will be to the wetlands is 69 feet. Uh, we do propose a sill fence that covers uh, the scope of work. Uh, this is shown in the gray, gray, gray dark uh, dash line. We do have a dewatering pit, and we do have a stockpile area. Um, all excavation um, should be taken through the existing driveway, as there's a stone wall on either side. Um, and this is an RDA, a uh, request for determination of applicability. We do propose uh, some conservation posts along the wetland line uh, in front of the stone wall to the north. 
Uh, I should mention that there is a drain pipe that goes down the west side of the property line into the wetlands that drains some of Roosevelt Avenue. And I am providing a silt tax in the catch basins. I think that's about it. Okay, I'll ask okay, John I'll ask for John his for comments his first. first. All right, uh, uh, let's see. I've got to get Steve unmuted here. Um, I've got. I went out to the site. I inspected the flagging and the site, and um, it's all in the lawn area. And um, I was asked ahead of time before they submitted whether they could do this as a request for determination. And uh, the fact that it's outside the 50 foot buffer qualifies, but quite often we have issues with um, controlling it after it's been determined that it doesn't need a notice of intent. So I asked the engineer to put a uh, special notes on the plan and that is actually acts like an order of conditions. And if you could, if you could zoom in on that. Can you zoom in a little bit? There so there's 14 conditions that go on the plan but that nobody can say they never saw it. And, and I think that uh, with this, we have enough control on it to make sure that things are done the way we want. So I'm recommending that we could issue a negative three determination. John, I, I, have, a, I, I have a comment not related to this particular filing, but that drain pipe, do we see many of those? The town has quite a few of these uh, drain pipes that lead from catch basins in the street through private property out to wetland. But so, it, so, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So it's feeding directly into the wetlands from the street with no settling device or anything. That is correct, and as part of the. Uh, MS4 that the town is now uh, obligated to meet the conditions of the EPA. They'll be eventually targeting these types of drains where the town will have to put in uh, a, a deep pump catch basin if it's not already there, uh, hoods on the uh, outlets to the catch basin, and, and in effect clean up what we're discharging to the wetlands uh, so that uh, there's improvements made. So those are those are in the works as far as those requirements, but it's quite common. It is, okay. I don't have any questions on the filing itself though. No, me neither. All right, hearing no more questions, I will entertain a motion to close the hearing. Motion to close. Yeah. <laughs> moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. So moved. And I will entertain a motion to issue a negative three determination. And I'll make the motion to uh, issue a negative three. All second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. John? Yes. I turned off my speaker to my computer, so we're not getting any more feedback, are we? No, it sounds good. No? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> this, okay, this will help be how we'll do it uh, for um, Mr. Snell. All right, and um, 
at this point, not to jump the gun, Tim, sorry. I just want to let nope, David that's... know that I'll do the presenting, David. Yes, yes. And you, and you and Mr. Snell can comment and add in, but um, I've got exhibits that I'll call up. Oh, excellent. Okay. Yep. All right, uh, Tim, it's all yours. Sorry to interrupt. Mm -hmm. Nope, because that's what I was going to say next on our agenda is uh, We're the up next. Uh, Manly Street United Drive, um, Ron Snell property for the discussion. All right, I'm going to share the screen with some documents. All right, we, we talked about this particular site, um, I think it was the end of last year, and we needed uh, some additional information and Mr. Snell was having some surveys done. But Mr. Snell uh, owns this property here, if you can see my cursor, and also this parcel here. And the uh, Hockamock River runs from right to left on the screen. So it flows down towards the bottom left corner here. And it's pretty much wetland all in this area. The town uh, wells are over here and the roadway into the town well is this lighter green uh, out to the building itself. So this kind of gives you an idea where it is on Manly Street. Um, and so, he has uh, requested that he be allowed to maintain the use of the site as it is today, even though some of the usage is encroaching on the 50 foot buffer. And uh, as um, compensation for the commission allowing that to occur, he wants to convey this parcel to the town for recreational purposes, uh, except for a small piece here that I'll show you in a minute, but the new plan shows the line coming across here. So that's kind of it in a nutshell, and I'll stop sharing this one and bring up another. Another plan? Mm -hmm. So this is the um, site in question, and you can see all his storage boxes and units uh, all along uh, this open area and along the, the edge of the woods. So the river is here, town well site here, driveway here, uh, the town owns this piece here as well as this on the other side. And this is the parcel he wants to, to sell to convey to the town for recreational usage. Uh, except again, if you can see my cursor, there's gonna be a, a line across here now because he wants to retain this. Um, <clears throat> so 
I think that's well, I have to admit somebody into the into the meeting. Uh, so at this point, I'll stop sharing this one. We can come back to any one of these afterwards, but uh, I've got kind of a sequence that I wanted to to give everybody. Phone, right. yeah. phone number? Phone number? No, no, that's not. All All right, this is the ANRAD that we approved. And that was, I believe, in um, 2016. So the green line is the wetlands. The orange line is the 50 foot buffer and the pink is the 100. And you can see these scalloped edges here. They're faint, it's a faint line, but it's the scalloped edges. That's the edge of the woods. And the reason why it's right up against the wetlands is that um, there's a slope and the wetlands are at the toe of the steep slope and the storage units are along the edge of the woods. So they're not into the wetlands, but they're um, they're on the at the top of edge, top edge of the slope, which drops right down into the wetlands, which is at the bottom of the slope. So I, I wanted to point that out because I've got another drawing that shows superimposes these lines onto the aerial photo. Uh, so again, um, the green is the wetland and this in this area here the the uh, edge of the woods is outside the 50 foot buffer but from this point here back towards the right uh, the edge of the woods is right up against the top of the bank uh, and then pretty much um, a, a number of feet that the bank slopes up away from the wetlands so I'm going to stop sharing that and get to the next one. So this is the newest plan. Hmm, why does it not? For some reason I can't um, zoom in on this one. I'm not sure why. Um, so the red is the parcel he wants to convey to the town. Uh, this piece was taken off and that's the one I alluded to before. This is the edge of the wetlands. This is the uh, Hockamock River. This area is owned by the Commonwealth of Mass Fish and Game, uh, town of West Bridgewater, Manly Street, um, and United Drive. So other than uh, showing the proposed lot that he wants to come or would like to convey to the town, um, there's really not much different on this plan. So I'll stop sharing that one.
Can we do that? Yeah. Let's walk through. You want me to come through? All right. Can everybody see this one? Yep. All right. So yep. um, this is the assessor's map. Um, I took the scale of it and um, took the scale of the ANRAD plan and converted the scales so that they were equal and then traced on the wetland line that you see here in blue. And the red line is the 50 foot buffer. So you can see where there is some encroachment. This is uh, a maintained and mowed lawn. Uh, these couple of units are all, all these units uh, to the bottom, towards the bottom of the red line are going into the 50 foot buffer. So he wants to be able to still do that because he wants, and I'm gonna let Mr. Snell explain, but uh, from what he had told me, he wants to sell this parcel and be able to allow the new owner to utilize the same areas that for storage that uh, he is. Uh, the red outline is the uh, land that's currently owned by him. Uh, and this down here below it is the parcel he wants to convey. And uh, again, excluding this little block here. And I think I got just maybe a couple of more. John, as we're going through these, I'll ask quickly that little block that's there. Yes. I assume that the planning boards has approved it as a form A and there's an easement or a right away to get to that block. Yes. I'm glad you oh. asked that. Because I <laughs> will show you the before we get too far. All right. So, oh, wait a minute, you can't see it yet, sorry. We've got to share it. All right, so um, this is the parcel that he's utilizing right now, and it's to be retained by him. Uh, the parcel you just asked about is below this uh, uh, label that I put on here, and it does have a, uh, a right of way to it, an access right of way, and so doesn't this parcel that um, he would like to sell or offer to give to the town. Uh, there's a uh, 20, I think it's 20 foot access easement along this parallel to this line uh, so that you can get in um, without having to Swim, in, swim over over the river to get into it. Um, this is the Commonwealth of Mass land. This here, this little piece on this side of the river that I have the arrow pointing to has been um, mentioned to be offered to the town to uh, kind of make kind of a linking type situation with uh, this being recreational, this being course obvious for fish and game recreational, and this one here, uh, if it's offered to the town, uh, would be part of it. And it would um, be opposite again, the well site. This is where the driveway entrance is to the well site. And uh, all of this is water department land. And I point that out because the next one will show a street view of what it looks like. So this is um, where the Hockamock River crosses underneath Manly Street. And it's got a guardrail, so you really can't do much at this point. Uh, but that other 20-foot um, easement I mentioned is up 
farther up uh, going north on Manly Street so that you'd be able to get in without uh, getting into the river there. And the next one that I'm going to show you uh, also will provide a little bit of more clarity as to where it is. All right, this is looking uh, south or back up towards uh, West Center Street 106. This is the water department uh, driveway into the well site. Um, the river is just to um, the right of this drawing and the end of the guardrail um, is here, which uh, provides access in from this area, plus ample parking on both sides so that uh, if we uh, clear a, a path down to the river. People can put their canoes, their kayaks in. Um, during the drier times of the year, there's plenty of areas to walk out through the wetlands and uh, be able to uh, put in a footpath through some of that wetlands out there, uh, out to the fishing game land. And if we do acquire the other piece, um, it'll just make a, a good, uh, recreational facility with access to water, which gives people the ability to go up and down the river and have plenty of places to park where a lot of our conservation lands don't really have good parking areas. And so if you get one or two cars there, that's about maximum that you can do. Reynolds Landing is a good place where you can get more cars and the other place is Trukies. Um, but again, uh, Parking's really a problem on most of our lands and here it wouldn't be. So having uh, made that presentation, um, I can go back to any one of these slides. So I'll turn it back over to you, Tim. And if you wanna ask Mr. Snell anything, I think he's with David Klenner tonight. So he'd be able to answer questions. Uh, my only main question would be is if, um... He is planning on selling it if the potential new buyer is going to be aware that if we were to approve it, use as is would be allowed probably, but I can't see any changes or improvements, um, such as if they were to pave an air um, or change the use of it, put a building or any type of alterations, then it would have to be um, another hearing and, and come before us again. That would be my comment. Does anybody else have anything else? I do. I, I think I asked this question last time, but I'll ask it again. Inside those trailers, what's being stored? And would the new owner understand that he'll be uh, restricted? I would assume restricted from, you know, putting certain products in those trailers that could potentially leak and, you know, run down into the wetlands. And David, are, is Ron with you so you can answer that question? Yes, Ron's uh, Ron's here, and uh, um, right now he's you know. Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell him what's in the trailers or what you think is going to be in the trailers, Ron? Or yeah, the new buyer is not going to be in the in the exact same business he is in the landscape, and um, he will be using the property to uh, park his equipment, and he may want to put a building up at time and. Um, I'm trying to um, establish the the usable wetlands line that um, is going to go with the property, and that's one of the reasons that I want to transfer um, the um, lot to to the town for recreational uses. And I would also mention that the entrance to the area, as John mentioned, where you could launch canoes. That's a level area, and it's, it's there's an area once you mow the lawn and maintain it, you can actually drive in there and take your canoes off on that site. And I went before the Conservation Commission, I believe, in the early 80s and got permission to maintain that property and uh, that area so that we could get access to the river. There's also a monument there 
in the name of Ed Teplow, who was instrumental in acquiring this land for the Wheelchair Motorcycle Association. They uh, they were trying to make an area that uh, people with spinal cord injuries could use um, wheelchairs in that area um, that would power. They, they were planning to power the wheelchairs, and, and I think it was before ATVs were even thought of. But anyway... Um, Ed Kepler was a conservationist, and that land and monument uh, say, states right on it that it's conservation-minded, uh, and uh, he was uh, a great conservation person. And so I, and I gave them uh, access to the property when I bought it from them, and I'd like to continue on. I used to keep it mowed. I haven't been in the area as much now, and uh, but I kept it mowed and picked up, and he was able to drive in off the road and uh, the monument right now was grown over with uh, fall downs more than anything. And uh, I'd, I'd like to see it, see it used that way. And um, as far as the trailers, my trailers are for storage only. They're basically all empty. And um, I have been using that land um, in the area that I am requesting for 40 years. And I would like to be able to, continue using it and continue with the use of that land as I pass it on. So uh, that's what I'm requesting. And uh, I think that the conservation area would work fine as John showed you. Um, it includes um, the state land, which is uh, under the wild uh, game and fish, fish and game. Huh? And uh, after that, there's another parcel that I have uh, right and use of that I sold to uh, a developer in Easton for the um, con for conservation. Uh, I believe it was uh, water compensatory, not compensatory area. Nitrogen it was uh, what was it? Nitrogen loading. Nitrogen loading area for project in Pine Street in Easton. And the gentleman that bought it has never seen the land, never been on it, and I retained every right to use it as if I own it. And I feel that the town would be able to use it. Nobody's ever going to throw you off. I have every right. I'm, I want the town to be able to use it. I want them to be able to see what's going on on that river between Manly Street and 106. And uh, John went down with me and has viewed it in this uh, serious beaver dam damage uh, where the, it's killing beautiful oaks in, in that meadow. And, and the uh, you know, I'd like to see uh, that there's a way that we could relocate the the beaver and keep that water flowing. It's not a good thing. It's flooding the whole area. Uh, I have a swimming area that I used to use, but the water level has got so high that you can't get to it. But that's crystal clear water, and there's a swimming area, and it's a sandy bottom. The most of the Hockamock River is muck, and it's it's a foot or two deep. And this area that I've been using for recreation and swimming for personal uses and family. Um, is a sandy bottom. It's interesting. It has um, fish in the area. It has uh, um, freshwater, uh, what do you call, are they freshwater clams, the freshwater mussels. And uh, it's it's a real interesting, it has a lot to offer for anybody that, I, I, any group that wants to study science and, and see the different uh, things that grow on, let alone the wildlife. And um, so that's that's what's in my mind. And I want to be able to continue using my, I want to have permission to use that land as, as I have been using it um, and going up pretty much to the, um, the line, as John has said, and we've discussed that it, it drops right off and it probably would give me, it would keep me away from the uh, vegetated line a certain distance that we wouldn't be able to get right up to it. Um, but that's, um, that's basically what I'm requesting. And, uh, I'd like the support of the board, and if if I could get it, thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, again, I would ask whether we could put some language in there that you don't have gasoline, for instance, being stored in the trailers, or or oil uh, lubricants of any kind that uh, you know might potentially uh, drip onto the ground and hence into the wetlands. Uh, Otherwise, that's always a possibility, and uh, we wouldn't know what was going on. So, I don't feel. You want me to answer? I, I don't feel that uh, necessarily that's going to be used where trailers or equipment is going to be backed up to the woods. But we want to be able to use the land, and, and uh, uh, it, my trailers will be gone. But um, 
the if they plan to do anything with that land as far as the building or anything, it would be all uh, controlled under the conservation, the, the planning board, and and other boards that the especially if they had a building, they'd have to uh, um, take all precautions and and of retaining any oil or any runoffs and things like that. And they, they expect so, that. And the, the people that are so, buying it, are, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, you're pulling all those trailers out then, is that right? What do you say? You I'm pull, hard of hearing, you, so you, I name it. You're mistake. pulling the trailers out? <laughs> yeah, oh, my. My trailers are, yeah it's, I, my trailers are all leaving. Okay. And um, we're cleaning the site up and um, wouldn't want to be able to maintain mowing. And like out at the front corner at Manly and in uh, Wallen, uh, Manly in the United Drive, we've kept that mowed uh, right along the edge of the line. As the town does, they go along and they mow eight feet back from the road. And, and we've tried to keep the entrance to to the United Drive as attractive and neat as we can. After all, it's one of the classiest um, industrial subdivisions in this town. It has the underground utilities and all the excess. And we have some pretty big uh, operations in there. And, and so I swap land when we when they built that road uh, to allow for the ceremonial entrance, which is in the center of the road where they have the sign. And it's perhaps one of the uh, best laid out um, industrial subdivisions in the town. I, I was uh, involved with the planning board. I was on it for 13 years and um, we were, it was part of the, the development of trying to make that a, a first class mm -hmm. industrial subdivision. So, and I'm, my lot will be clean, cleaned up and, the, the, the trailers won't be there any longer. When I was there, I was in the woods and there was no nobody in my area. So mm -hmm. uh, we want this lot in this area to to get up to to look okay. at. I think I understand. The sure. the I'm sorry. I said I understand. Thanks for answering that. If I might uh, interject a little, um, I. I think the general idea is to allow Mr. Snell to um, use up to the limits of his current use, which encroaches the 50 foot buffer and as compensation or justification for allowing that kind of use for a new owner, he wants to be able to uh, provide the town this recreational uh, land or land that could be used for recreation purposes. Mm -hmm. um, so in order to grant uh, a waiver to the next owner, this landscape business that, that he mentioned tonight, um, you would have to have a good reason to waive the 50 foot. Um, so I think he's providing, trying to provide that with that offer. Now, right. does the commission have to make a decision tonight? Uh, my suggestion is that you take it under advisement. And um, I put together some thoughts based on the questions I've heard or the statements being made by both Mr. Snell and commission members and route it to, their, to all of the commission members and um, have you look it over and then we could put it on uh, a subsequent agenda, whether it's the next one, which we could conceivably do, or whether it's uh, the one after that. Uh, but I, I think we could just put it on the next agenda to uh, discuss some of the things that I would put together based on what I've heard. Sounds good. Yeah, I'd say let's put it on for the next agenda. And, and see it all. How soon does this landscape want to be on site? Uh, Did you hear that, uh, Ron? I'm sorry, we that was tying it up. up. If we, yeah, it, it's uh, how, how was, soon how is the potential landscaper? What did he say? Um, the buyer. How soon will they be coming in to buy? It's going to be um, probably two or three months before there's any passing of papers or what I've, I'm going to uh, get okay. my equipment out of there and make changes. And one of the things that I wanted to work with the Conservation Commission, they won't, I wanted to do this before any there's any agreement or anything. I want the buyers to understand. I want to have audit in black and white. Um, I, I want to put the horse before the cart and set it up right. And that work with you 
board and, and uh, have everybody on an equal understanding, all right? Yeah. Good, good. That's that's what we wanted to hear, because if you were under the gun and, and needed to move quick on it, then we'd, we'd no, have no. to move no, things no forward. Faster, faster, here. But... We're going to work on it and get something set up right as far as the use of of uh, lot two for your recreational uses. I'd like to have uh, Tim and, and some of your other guys go up with uh, maybe John and I and look at and see, visualize what I have in mind and see what I had there uh, with permission of the conservation to have that area mowed and maintained. And, it, and there's some landscape rocks and it, it, it's, uh, we had a picnic table there at one time and a rubbish barrel and, mm -hmm. and some of the uh, people from Brock and I think uh, was a father John's or uh, somebody that the people that they used to bring the kids down and, and they sit by the river and they do a little fishing. And, um, so it, it's, uh, I'd like to have you see it and see what like, really, what I have in mind. Okay. So, uh, you can let me know. We'll try to get together if you want to take a look at it. All right. I have John. I have one question. How large of a parcel is he conveying to the town? How long, large of the parcel that he wants to give to the town? Yes. Yeah. The uh, the new parcel would be six point nine acres, roughly. Okay. Okay, I guess next agenda, right? Yep, I'll put it on yeah, for the next agenda. Can... Perfect. Thanks, Ron, for bringing this to us. It's a, uh, it's an interesting proposal. It, it looks doable. <laughs> he thanked you. What was that? He thanked you. Oh, he thanked you. Yes, thank you for your time. If the board wants to have a viewing, I um, appreciate the call and I'd try to meet any member there that would like to see the area we're talking about. We'll let you know, Ron. Okay, thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good night. You too. You too. Thanks. So uh, while we're discussing this, I mentioned the uh, person who had uh, suggested that they were interested in donating uh, their land along the river because it's wetland and, and not really usable. Uh, do you want to discuss that or do you want to put that on the next agenda? It's really not on our agenda tonight, but... Um, is that that parcel he was just talking about, or no? Uh, let me call it up, and I'll. Was that that odd-shaped one that was kind of like to the south of the fishing game parcel? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. So well, why gonna... don't you give us the the lowdown on it? <laughs> okay. So uh, this is owned by um, currently the Five Amigos Realty Trust or something like that. It's it's definitely Five Amigos, but I believe it's a Realty Trust. Um, it's all along the river, and um, it's I think it's um, about four acres, if I remember correctly. I've got I've got the description, but um, it's about four acres, and uh, it would make a connection uh, for considerable distance along the river, um, which would provide some additional trails and some additional recreational uh, activity, passive recreational activity. Um, if you're interested in pursuing that, I can. Uh, provide some more information from the person who offer who wants to offer it and um, 
and we we can put it on for another agenda. But if you're not interested, I won't bother. Uh, John, it looks like this. Quick question. Is, is Go it ahead. Landlocked, John. I it's mean, landlocked. it doesn't really. Okay. Mo. <laughs> uh, it looks like there's some pretty good upland around the uh, bottom left. Am I reading the map right, or is that water? Uh, it could be. Uh, it could be a wet meadow. I'm pretty sure most of it's uh, wetlands. And um, again, you can access it during the late spring up to, let's say, late fall. And then after that, it starts to get to the point where you'd need boots to, to walk through there. But other times of the year, you, you'd be able to walk along a path to uh, get to the river or do fishing and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the answer on landlocked? Yes or no? Yes, it is. It's landlocked. Yes. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'd be interested to see now, what again, the, uh, the cost might be. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's free. It's just a matter of um, making sure that I understood the person correctly because they wanted to offer it um, with the provision that it might um, have the conservation area named after the relative uh, that the five amigos are related to. Oh, that's kind of what I remember. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's, yeah, I don't I mean, know about you guys, but I mean, it just adds another piece to what we have there. Can't hurt. I mean, I, I would only throw in, and I'll play the devil's advocate. I I know the um, the assessors don't like to see property come off of the tax roll. Um, this one's landlocked. It can't have a lot of value to begin with, I don't think. And if no. it's that close to the river, I don't think there's a lot of land that would be developable, realistically. No. no. Um, so I, I can't see the assessors having a lot of problems with us if we were to accept this gift of land and, and put it under the town. Um, but I would just be aware that it is land coming off of the tax rolls, so. Sure, sure. So um, all of this is fairly the same elevation. I mean, it might vary a foot or two one way or another um, until you come to the bottom of the slope at Mr. Snell's property. Yeah, um, and the bottom of the slope is the hundred-year floodplain for this river, so that means all of this is floodplain uh, for for the river. So it's really something that can't be built upon ever. All all of this land, so that's why it's so low value. That's probably why the Commonwealth got this here. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't know how true this is, but I've been told that um, by a resident of town that um, it's feasible to get this back into the town land if it sits out there by itself. I don't know how accurate that is, but I, I would pursue it again if the um, if the commission's interested so that you would, if that were true, you would end up with all of this as being one big conservation area with plenty of parking, which is key. Um, I, I just, uh, it bothers me that we have some nice pieces of land, but some of them, you can only get one or two people to visit and that's it. And I don't mean it should be uh, something where you need a big parking lot and, and have uh, thousands of people walking on it, but sometimes one or two people is really not, uh, almost doesn't seem like it's worth uh, going through the trouble of maintaining the trails and maintaining the land. Right. Uh, but if you able to bring in your canoes and your kayaks, you could have uh, a dozen kayakers on various parts of this river because you have plenty of room for, for their cars to park and get the kayaks into the, into the water. So it'd be a valuable recreational asset. Mm. So if you're interested, I will talk to that fellow who contacted me and then get you some more information, more than I have right now. Uh, but if you're not, I, I just uh, end the conversation. No, I'm fine. No, I'd say go ahead and pursue it. Yeah. Okay. Not, nothing uh, is obligating us at this point. 
John, I would say pursue it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll uh, stop sharing that. All right. Um, next is some invoices. Uh, I went to look for the warrants that Kitty would have prepared, and I didn't find them, so it'll have to go on our next agenda. Okay. And other that, than uh, that, last Does anybody have anything else? Up, John, the last What's... picture. Yes. That you had up to the right, I believe, was where all the old uh, bike trails were. Uh, and that land was purchased and we approved it for a big warehouse development, but I don't think anything ever went forward with that, did it? Oh, oh, oh yes, 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 yes. Um, can you see the screen? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're, ta you're talking about this in here. Yes, yes, yes. yeah. Yeah, that's still, it's still out there uh, pending, but nobody's moving. Okay, all right. I mean, the other advantage to adding this piece of property and protecting it, it's near the town's wellheads. That's which true. I'm sure the town yeah. would yeah. appreciate yeah. having a little more protection, protected area with it. So, sure. I guess in terms of well science, that's uh, all connected pretty much. Yeah, it, it really bothers me that this piece isn't uh, locked up because it's so close to the wells. Yes, yes. But they'll have to they'll have to abide by all of DEP and the town's uh, water resource protection mm -hmm. requirements. All right, did anybody else have anything? Mm -mm. No. Nope. All right, John, and I guess we're ready to entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. I have a move to motion in a second. All those in favor? Aye. So moved. All right. Good night, everyone. Stay well, everyone. Yep. Stay well. Stay well.